Hello and welcome to more Popper Cube. I have to pull this out very carefully here. Uh, what do we want? Ooh, Guardian of the Guild Pact. Protection from monocolored. So look at this cube. Look at this pack. See how many multicolored cards there are. Uh, basically, all of the removal in this entire cube is monocolored. So this thing is extraordinarily hard to kill. So I'm leaning towards that. The other consideration is Land of War Elves because turn one elf into turn two big play is just a really really solid sequence and like i think there's only three land or elf variants in this cube so i'm not sure which one to go for i don't know what i like better between fast mana and like an unkillable card that's it is four mana and it's a two three so um this card doesn't necessarily win you all of the games i think i'm gonna try land or elves because yeah i've actually talked myself out of this card i, I want to try fast mana Wild Nakata is in here, that's fun. I don't know if this is a good decision, but it is a decision. Like, Land of War Elves into the pro monocolored guy would be good. I just don't like taking four drops that much. Like, it, it just seems better to have something fast, you know? Um, Speaking of that, we have Triplicate Spirits is actually really good, but I did just pass a really, really good white card. So I could instead go, like, Green Red Burn, take, like, Land of War Elves... Oh, I could go green red tokens. Land of War Elves into Scatter the Siege. There's a lot of like trumpet blasts and stuff. Let's try that. I'm on board with that. Uh, Brindle Shote makes a boar. Kranko's Command makes more tokens. Um, we're, we're very much hoping to not play against something that does damage to each creature. But I, I like this more than Brindle Shote. Ambuscade is really nice, but let's try red green tokens. I'm not missing out on much else either. There's an Elvish Mystic. And Call of the Conclave makes tokens. There's like a Firebolt Groundswell. I'll take the Mystic. Sure. Okay, so Burn Bright is kind of the effect we're looking for, right? Pump your whole team, make tokens, win the game. Um, Ishinu Sand Sprinter is a 3 mana 4 1 tribal haste that goes back to your hand. This card is pretty cool art, but I guess. This should wheel, but I'm just going to try and take it. I don't know. I haven't tried this archetype, but it seems sweet. Sprout Swarm better be in here, although it might just be too good for vintage, for Pauper Cube. It's definitely not too good for Vintage Cube, but that card is really, really broken. Okay, well, red seems pretty open. Um, sacrifice another creature. I've never seen this card before. It gets plus one, plus one gains Menace. There's Incinerate, Raging Crunch, and Artillerize. So this is actually very good with tokens because we can just like sacrifice a token to go five to the face. So I think I'm actually going to take that passing in incinerate, which I would like. I would love an incinerate in this deck, but five damage for four mana is kind of exactly where you want to be. Uh, Beetleback Chief really works with the deck. I like Nessie Nasp a lot, but we're going tokens today. Oh man, uh, Searing Blaze versus Dragon Fodder. I feel like Searing Blaze is just way too good. It is hard on the mana and we can take Rugged Highlands, which is like the best duel, but I guess I'll take the Blaze. It is possible that we just end up mono red. It's kind of unfortunate we spend our green picks on like one drops. Like Elvish Mystic into Searing Blaze is a very tough thing to do for your mana. But if we can make it work, then we can kind of have the best of both worlds. This is kind of the downside of aggro and pauper specifically, is you don't have untapped mana fixing, which makes aggro specifically, like multicolored aggro specifically, much worse than other things. Oh, there's an Orcish Hellraiser. Do you like Orcish Hellraiser? There's also Ginger Brute. So this will be good in any deck we play. It's like a one mana, one one, hard to block. Really good with Rancor and things like that. We can play it early. This is just like damage to the face. I think this is probably better. I don't know. I could see that going either way. Um, Wild Nicotle. There's actually quite a bit of white going around. But if I do somehow end up like three color aggro, <laughs> the Nicotle can get us there. Uh, Cartouche of Strength Ambuscade. So this makes them fight. This stops things from blocking. And it's a five mana four four. I kind of like the giant. Okay, there's our Skull Cleaver, probably a bit better than Ground Swell, although both would be decent. There's a Sand Sprinter. Okay, well, White Tokens was open, so it looks like Red White Tokens is actually where we're supposed to be. 
Oh man, test of faith last pick. Did anyone read this? Okay, just look at this card. Prevent the next three damage that will be dealt to the target creature. For each damage prevented this way, put a counter on it. That's ridiculous. So I think I'm supposed to be red-white. I, I should have picked up on that sooner. I was just kind of like mindlessly taking red cards. But white did feel very, very open in the end. And there's the battle screech. Oh boy. That being said, probably now whoever I was passing to like picked up all these white cards and is like very happy about it. So I could take... Mm, this is tough. I don't really want to take Fanatical Firebrand. It's like fine, but not amazing. Um, whereas Yavimaya Elder... It'll help all the mana woes, because I'm going to want to run a lot of green anyway, but Battle Screech... No, I think I'm going to take the Elder and try and wield a Firebrand. I think we're going to commit to green here. Ooh, Arc Lightning. Oh man, there's so much good stuff. Pristine Talisman, so good against us. Arc Lightning just kills everything. Definitely better than Lightning Strike, and we might wield the Pyromancer. So yeah, we're going to take this. All the burn. Oh man, Arachnus Web, can't attack or block. Eh, that card's fine. Uh, Burning Prophet is good if we have non-creature spells. Sign Summoning does help with the tokens theme. Um, Wicker Bowl Elder does kill artifacts and such. Oh, I didn't know Grey Merchant was in here. I guess that makes sense. That's kind of fun. I think I take Sign Summoner. More tokens. We can wheel this Perilous Mirror. I'm on board. Uh, Winding Way, there's the Tortured Existence to go with um, Grey Merchant. So Winding Way is good with creatures, but we actually have quite a bit of burn. I like the Flunkies. This card quite a bit worse than Pierce Strider. And this card is good too, but I think I'm going to take the Flunkies. Given that we're playing tokens, it's pretty likely we're going to have something to attack alongside this. There's our Magma Jet. Overgrown Armasaur might come around. Okay, Pyrotechnics. Ooh, Maul Splicer. So this is kind of another decision point. We want a bunch of tokens, but I think Pyrotechnics is way too good to pass up. Especially since we have like a good, not a good bit of ramp, but a little bit of ramp, right? Two elves, Yavimaya Elder, to get up to five mana. Because this can very frequently kill two, three, sometimes four creatures. Or it just goes four damage to the face, which is still good. Uh, what do we want here? Rampaging Hippo is huge. Volshock Sorcerer just helps us like ping every turn which is good uh i guess we need to decide now what kind of deck we want to be do we want to be like a low to the ground fast deck or do we want to have a bit more like yavamaya elder ramp play a six mana five six trample kind of on board with the six mana five six trample but this card is nah this card's so hard to beat i want to be red green aggro this is one of my favorite archetypes anyway Ooh, bailoth gorger oh scourge devil that's got to be that's got to be pretty good in our archetype Good with tokens, pumps everything, you can unearth it. Yeah. I'm digging this. I really want to get Sprout Swarm, but that's very unlikely. And we also really, really badly need fixing because... Uh... <laughs> There's our Firebrand, but I could also just take a Forgotten Cave. One damage to anything. I think I'm going to take the Cave. That feels a little bit better. Okay. So this is 6 mana for a 1-4. Draw a thing. This kills Flyers. This kills creatures. I'll do this. It's kind of like a weird mole drifter. Oh man, Kasali Pride Mage. If I had the fixing, we could have a pretty sick wild in the coddle deck, but I do not. Ooh, Brazen Wolves. There's Tortured Existence. I so like this card's good in theory, but I keep remembering there's like no delve and like no madness. So it's really hard to justify. I think I'm actually gonna take Peace Strider as a sideboard card. Up to two target creatures you control, deal damage equal to their power. To a third creature. So I'm gonna take the Armasaur. We got Mall Spricer. So, oh, that's kind of okay. So pack three, we're really looking for ramp or fixing. This is this is that. Passing a capsize hurts very deeply, but ooh, hissing iguanar is one of my favorite cards. I say that about so many cards, but this one's sweet. Whenever something dies, you just do one damage. So if we play a bunch of tokens, I'm gonna try and wheel that and take Prophetic Prism. That might be greedy. In fact, it is almost certainly greedy, but that's who I am. Branching Bolt is really good. Mother Bear is also pretty nice. Does help with the tokens. But Volshock Morningstar, that is really good with tokens. And just creatures, right? You like play Krenko's Command, make a Goblin a 3-3 attack. Yeah, let's take that. Um, Findhorn Elves, I think I need Evolving Wilds. 
I love Finthorn Elves. Frenzy Goblin would be good. Savage Smash is like kind of insane. But I need the fixing. Probably not playing that. Yeah, because we we need to make this mana work somehow. The the prism and the fixing went a long way. I don't think I'm playing Wild Nicoddle. I don't think a one mana sometimes two two is good enough. I don't think I'm playing the Sand Sprinter, but I guess I can cycle it if it's not good. Ooh, Rampant Growth. So here's the game plan. We take Rampant Growth, Wheel, Goblin Instigator, or Colossal Might. Do I need Rampant Growth? Is that the game plan? Or does the game plan take Goblin Instigator, Wheel, Rampant Growth? That is a good question. I have like a good amount of five drops that I would like to cast. I think the answer is take... Mm, I don't know. I think I'm going to take the Instigator. Maybe I just don't play Mall Splicer. That seems okay. Because Scatter the Seeds has Convoke, this has Cycling, and this has Cycling. Farseek is, uh, I guess, not necessarily better than Rampant Growth, but Play the GP is also pretty good. And Burst Lightning. Man, this deck is going to be good. Yeah, my curve kind of stops at 5, and I don't even know if I'm playing this guy. So let's just take the Geopede. Hope to wheel the Lightning. Rancor! Okay, that is the card for this deck. That's so good. Reckless Charge will be sweet, but... Rancor turns everything into a threat. Uh, discard two cards. No, I don't need card advantage. I think I take Fervent Cathar. 3-2 stop you from blocking, or... 4 mana 3-4 reach is huge. But given that we just picked up Rancor, I think we're looking pretty aggressive. Oh man. There's a Gruul Guildgate. Dyna Charge pumps your whole team for 3 mana. Or Lifecraft Calvary is like a 6 mana, 5, five mana 6-6 six, six Trample, which is also absolutely huge. I think I'm going to take the Guildgate because again, we have the playables, we need the fixing. Sylvan Might versus Elephant Ambush. Man, white was very open. Gallant Calvary, Oblivion Ring, and all that. But so is green. Like, every color is open because all the cards are good. I guess that card's fine. Here we can take... It enters the battlefield. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste. Versus Branching Bolt, which just kills a bunch of stuff. And this fights... I kind of like Branching Bolt. All right, we got Frenzied Goblin. Sure. And we got Colossal Might. Okay. And Farseek. Or Chatter of the Squirrel. Um, I didn't take the thing that does damage to everything. I don't think I need Farseek right now. So I'm just going to take the Squirrel thing. Reckless Charge Wheel, okay. We did not get a last pick Dyna Charge or whatever that card was. I don't know if I need that. Right now I only have two things to pump my team. But yeah, probably this is worse than some of the other ones. Move this. I have so many playables. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh man, um, kind of less excited about the hippo now. I kind of regret that pick, but it is a 5 6 trample, so I like all of these. Sylvan Might, yes, 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 yes. Franco's Command, Goblin Instigator gives me some tokens. I don't think I'm playing Armasaur. The, the thing is, I actually want a good amount of green sources so that I can play these, so I think Yavamai Elder is acceptable. I don't think I need a Mole Drifter when we're trying to like beat down. Beetleback Chief. Peace Strider was for the sideboard. This card's actually a very solid play. Scourge Double is good. Pyrotechnics is also good in the deck. Nine cuts? Why? All right, we're going to get rid of... I think Sylvan Might is actually better than Colossal Might in this deck because you can use it twice. <laughs> Although plus four plus four in Trample is... That's huge. Um, this card hits very hard. Really like Scourge Devil. 5 mana 4 4, 2 things can't block is really good too, especially with a lot of tokens. But maybe it's too expensive? Because Scatter the Seeds will say cost like 3. I could also do something like this, at which point this is uncastable. This is another version of the deck that I could build. So I basically splash green for Rancor. Splashing for Sylvan Might seems weird, but. Yeah, I guess I would run it like this then. Splashing for this also seems weird. Maybe Branching Bolt, 3 damage to a creature with and without flying. But th that feels like a better sideboard card, because if they don't have flyers, I'm going to be pretty sad. This version of the deck also looks pretty nice. I have Krenko's Command, Goblin Instigator. I could even just get rid of Burn Bright and run the Cyclops instead. This makes the mana a lot more consistent, because the odds of me having turn 1 Elvish Mystic is actually pretty low. I miss out on basically just scatter the seeds as far as payoffs go. 
But then I run this, 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 and like just a couple forests. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six green sources for three green spells. That seems totally fine. That makes the deck a lot more consistent. I'm like, I'm not playing that. Then I basically just have like Scourge Devil and Pump for value. And then I can just use the tokens for like Volshock, Morningstar, Rancor, and things like that. I'm going to try this. I don't know how good this is, but we'll find out together. See you guys round one. All right, we are playing against Ace Azure. Let's go first. All right, I'll keep this, but I don't like it. Mostly because I'm on the play and I have all my colors. Maybe I should not have kept this, but opponent's pretty aggressive. So, oh man, I get the distinct feeling that Arc Lightning is going to be good against their deck. What do you guys think? Or they just go Bonded Construct, go. I can't complain about that, but I can complain about the quantity of mountains that I have drawn. Sandstep Outcast. Oh man, make a spirit. I'm gonna kill all of them. Look how good Arc Lightning is here. Oh boy. Uh, I'm actually going to elect to take some damage just because next turn I can be so efficient with my mana. I get to go Arc Lightning into Goblin Instigator, and that's just ridiculous. Whereas this turn I could have gone Arc Lightning uh, okay, well, I let them cast a Daybreak Chimera, which kind of hurts. Hmm. Well, let's do this. 1-1-1. One, one, one. So I actually end up using my mana inefficiently anyway, but I get in a pretty good hit here because I get to Frenzied Goblin stop Daybreak Chimera from blocking. Opponent's at 15. If they attack, then I can stop whatever they play next from blocking, unless they have this stupid thing that makes two 2-2 two, two knights, which would be brutal. Sure. This race I'm okay with. Okay, this mountain I'm not okay with. This race favors me if I, like, draw spells, but what is this? Four or five? Eat lands is not where you want to be. I did keep a five lander, so that's on me. But opponent's at ten, and I have, like, a bunch of tokens. So if I just draw the creature that pumps my whole team... Smash for a million. That's game. Oh boy. Okay, they're racing. If they have another flyer that just kills me, that would be sad. No. What? Dude! Not only is it another flyer, it's a battle screech. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I need a lot of help here. Pyrotechnics. Quakefoot Cyclops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I need to cycle this and then hit a burn spell to get there. So you can't block. And then I need to hit like pyrotechnics or something like that. Falling wilds. <laughs> it was a, a valiant effort. We swing out. Stop this from blocking. And make the opponent scared. I don't know. I just drew way too many lands this game. But I'm dead in the air. Yep. So as it turns out, it would have been way better to sequence the other way, but couldn't have known. So Branching Bolt, pretty good in this matchup. We can get rid of uh, something. Oh, Scion Summoner, probably. And they have a lot of flyers. Sure, I can race. All right, let's 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 go back. Let's do this. Oh, this is a much better hand. Uh, What do I want to do here? I can Frenzy Goblin turn one. Then if I hit a land, I can Kranko's Command. That's probably just worse than turn one Gruel Guildgate. Turn two Krenko's Command. Because I don't have many other one drops. They mulligan. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Yeah. Let's make, make some gobos. Hopefully they don't play like a, a 2 2. <laughs> that feeling when a 2 2. Actually, no, 2 2 would be fine because I have Colossal Might. So let's go ahead and offer this trade. Okay. Didn't think that would happen. So now I get to go Goblin Instigator. Frenzied Goblin. And now we're racing again. Seems like a tough race for the opponent now that I have actual spells in my hand. Oh. What? Alright, the, the Arc Bolt. The one that hits flyers and non-flyers. Dude! That's insane! <laughs> I mean, I guess I could stop it from blocking. Okay, that's actually fine. So, let's do that and then play the Morning Star. Yeah. Okay, I, f I forgot all about how good Frenzy and Goblin is, but I still would like to kill a Flyer and a non-Flyer. You cannot block. They're at 11. That's rather low. 
Colossal Might represents four. If they swing out and I draw a land, I can Sand Sprinter plus Frenzied Goblin. That represents quite a bit of damage. Oh man, they missed a land drop. Yeah, let's just do this. That's four. Actually, what do I want to do here? I don't really like that this has to go back to hand, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's got to be good enough. I could also just equip the Morning Star. That also represents four damage over two turns, so I'm going to equip the Morning Star here. Um, there's actually some decision, like, do I equip it to the Frenzied Goblin? Because if they play a Flash Blocker, like the White Main Lion, Dizzying Swoop. Okay. Um, that becomes an issue. I'm pretty glad I went with uh, the Morning Star equip, because that would have played very poorly in, into that. So they're at 8. This represents 4, and this represents 4, but one of these is more mana. So I guess just cycle this, try and hit a land. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Sure. So I get to kill their stuff now. Am I, are they dead? One, two, three, four. They're actually just dead. Man, that's boring. Equip here. That feeling when you have to pacifism a token. They didn't even, okay. I didn't even have to show them. <laughs> I guess they're just dead. Uh, keep it the same. Branching Bolt. That's the one we want to draw. All right, I'll keep this. Um, on the draw, we get to cycle Forgotten Cave. Again, why this card is so good. It's just a land that can be either a land or, you know, a card draw spell, which is the ideal scenario when you're playing an aggro deck. Mistral Charger. Yeah, let's hit a removal. Okay, there's a removal. Yes, I think I'm just going to kill the 2-1. I know they could have like better stuff, but I also get to set up my draw step. Oh, bottom, bottom? Because Scourge Devil should be a late game play anyway. Yeah, I want to hit more creatures. Kabuto Moth. That's actually a really good card. I like that card a lot. Fervent Cathar. So let's lead with the Skull Cleaver. They are certainly not going to want to block. Next turn, I can play a hasty 6 damage Orcish Hellraiser. Oh, if they're doing this, that's even better. Let's say you cannot block. Next turn, we're going to Reckless Charge a Plated Geopede, probably. What am I doing here? I go Plated Geopede, land Reckless Charge, and they can't really block. Yeah. And then I can like Colossal Might. Yeah, let's do that. So play to Jupede. Because like, do they want to chump block with Apex Hawks? That seems pretty bad. Or actually, I don't even think I have to play a land here. I think I can just Reckless Charge. That makes it a four power. Yeah, so they can... Oh, I do have to play land. This is plus one, plus two. That's huge. No longer. Take six. So if I draw a land next turn, I don't see my opponent getting out of this. Because now they can, like, never attack. And they're at 6 life against my deck. Okay, never mind. We got, we got a game still. But if I draw a land, I can go Reckless Charge Colossal Might, and that should do a lot. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so they're going to tap down my attackers this turn. That is almost certain. Right? Let's move to combat. I'm expecting double tap. Yeah, okay. Which is cool. So now I get to do this, play the Flunkies, play the Hellraiser. And can you do 16? We did it. See you guys round two. All right, let's see if we can get round two down. Played against Orange Juice. I'm going to keep this hand. That reminds me, so yesterday, I told my opponent good luck. They said, thanks, huge fan. Love the content. I'm a huge fan of Orange Juice as well. Oranga. Sorry you guys have to watch me type here. Um, yesterday, I was, so I usually like, I have oranges and I like blend them up to put into smoothies with other things like walnuts and stuff. And I, I don't know whatever batch of oranges I got is like the most bitter tasting oranges of all time. So right now I like orange juice quite a bit less than normal, but that's okay. So let's evolving wild. Somehow I ended up keeping a five lander again, but that's fine. Game recognizes game. <laughs> Right, so we're both the same colors. Let's just get a mountain. I don't have any... Uh, 
Yeah, let's get a mountain. Because I might want a Searing Blaze. No, I don't want a Searing Blaze. Let's get a forest. Because I'm going to go Orcish Hellraiser here. Pay the Echo. I guess I could have maybe wanted a Searing Blaze turn 3, but it's also possible that I want to cast Rancor twice in one turn. And given that I'm just drawing infinite lands, this feels better. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. Well, I might regret this. That feeling when your deck is full of... I actually am kind of okay with this trade. Am I? Yeah. This That represents a 4-4 flyer. I'm actually going to attack. Yeah, I got him. Well, it would have been really nice if I could have Searing Blaze there, but this turn I get to Searing Blaze plus Morningstar, which is also pretty good. And I just, like, a Searing Blaze, whatever blocker they might have. Hmm. No plays. Hmm. Uh... I don't think I'm going to equip. I think I'm just going to play a Scion Summoner. So let's play land so that I can like Searing Blaze a blocker. Because if I equip here and then they Lightning Bolt my Orcish Hellraiser, that's pretty bad. Like that takes my whole turn. So I would rather develop out my board. Ooh, that went pretty well. Man, they took the damage too. That went pretty well for me. It makes sense because I could have had a pump spell there. Like if they Bolt and I Giant Growth, they're in trouble, but I think they're still in trouble because I can um, just go like Searing Blaze Sand Sprinter and they haven't shown a blocker yet. Yeah, let's do that. Well, I drew infinite lands, but we're still doing okay here. Playing the Sand Sprinter plays around like a burn spell much better because yeah, they, they branching bolt the creature instead of like what I was going to equip the Morningstar to. So, I'm at the mercy of the top of my deck because I've drawn like a ton of lands, but opponent seems to not have much action going on. Or they might just have all burn spells in hand. All right, let's equip here. I'm drawing only lands. Oh my gosh. All right, let's attack for four. I don't want to attack with the Eldrazi Scion and keep playing out our lands. This is so many lands. <laughs> if I had any spells in hand, we could just easily win. That being said, I can easily win Pretty likely anyway. Cartouche of Strength. So they actually have to lose their Iguanar. So they need a follow-up kill spell or blocker for the Eldrazi Scion, otherwise they die. Okay, that's fair. Any burn spell prevent them from blocking? Yeah. Man, okay, we won the Flood. Flooding against Orange Juice. Um, They are the mirror match. I didn't see any flyers, so Branching Bolt felt kind of bad. The extra toughness on, like, the Hippo is actually kind of tempting here, right? They have, like, a handful of burn spells, and I just play Rampaging Hippo, Overgrown Armasaur. Those could be, like, the Mirror Breaker, so I just go into, like, a little bit bigger of a deck. Problem is they're all double green. Like, <laughs> double green is still a problem. I think, let's see, from what I saw, my deck is just better than theirs. But maybe I do bring in Peace Strider because the three toughness is pretty good. Um, what do I get rid of? Scion Summoner. They have a hissing iguanar. Eh. We'll just we'll just keep it as is. I need to see more of their deck before I'm going to make a change that drastic. Okay, so here's a hand where we would like to draw as many lands as I drew last time. That would be pretty good. They also mulligan. Oh boy. Um Do I want Forgotten Cave? I think I I don't know what I want to do here. I think I'm just going to play it. Three lands. We kind of want a forest. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to cycle it and see what happens. Or maybe I just straight up cycle it. Like, I'm going to feel really silly if I play this and then just draw a bunch of lands. And I'm going to feel really silly if I cycle this and draw no lands. I think we cycle. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. Okay, that's enough lands. Let's stop. Let's stop drawing lands now. Let me Searing Blaze this. Yeah. I don't get to attack, which is unfortunate. Oh no. Alright, well... I still get to kill that before too many things go crazy. Yeesh. Alright, Pyrotechnic's gonna deal with that one. Oh! Ooh, that's good. So, now I need a forest and then we're like in business. This is 5 damage. Maybe I just let that happen. Because they're at 12? This is five and this is four. Oh, that's really good for them. Now it's a five-five. All right. 
So I need another haste creature here, otherwise I'm like very likely to just artillerize their 5-5 down. <sighs> so Frenzied Goblin lets me hit for 4. If they have any burn spell, I'm in like a good bit of trouble. I think they have 3 cards in hand, but I do have to 2 for 1 myself here. Let's see, so if they have a removal spell, I'm in a good bit of trouble. Because like I play Frenzied Goblin, they kill my Goblin, I just have a Mog Flunkies, I fall to 10. But this can effectively put them to 7. I'm gonna go for it. Just hope they don't have any removal here. Of course they have both end of turn. No! Ah! If I had an extra land 2 to like play Goblin and hold up Artillerize, that would be good. Now we're falling very far behind. Oh boy. Yeah, now we're falling very far behind. So, man, Mogflunkies is like the worst creature ever. Mountain can kill this. It's only nine damage. If I draw a haste creature, I can kill them on the spot. No, I can't. All right, let's just kill this. And then next turn, Pyrotechnics can deal with that. And then I just have to top deck. So I want them to play an X1 here. Ugh. Okay. Well, we have outs. I'm gonna do like this. We just gotta hope Raging Crunch doesn't have a friend for a while. <laughs> ah! That's a lot of friends. That's a lot of lands. So I'm just gonna keep this in hand in case I draw like plated geopede. Um so they can hit me for six, and I think I basically just have to take it. I don't think I win by trading off my 2-2 here. Uh, maybe I do. Trade off here. Right, I can hit them for 7. What can I draw that does damage? 7 damage, they go to 3. I used most of my big burn. There's the creature that pumps my whole team. I think I have more win conditions if I don't block. Obviously they could just burn me, but... Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't think I was winning this game. <laughs> It's like the same deck, but theirs is just, oh my gosh. Their deck is just way better than mine. All right, let's, let's move on. So I am confirmed that playing Chunky Dudes will be actually quite good against them. So let's bring in all this stuff, add some forests, probably like two. Um, right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I need more. Let's go up to eight forests, I guess. Um, with that, we're also going to add Yavamaya Elder and the one four. Is this correct? To just go like way bigger? Um, at that point, Sylvan Might's probably better than Colossal Might because of the flashback. And the elves help me ramp, but they're actually pretty bad. Leaking, but they do give me double green, so I'm okay with those. We're gonna cut one mountain to make all this work. Get rid of Viashino Sand Sprinter. Uh, what else? I guess Reckless Charge at this point. Scion Summoner is kind of weak. I mean, the one four blocks everything. I still have to cut three things. I guess Frenzied Goblin is pretty weak against all of their tokens. Let me get rid of like two ones. Minotaur Skull Cleaver. This is actually kind of hard. Maybe I get rid of the Skull Cleaver. Although it is quite nice on the play. Like that hits for a lot of damage. Uh, I don't know. Get rid of the Cyclops. And then the last card to cut is, I guess, the Skull Cleaver. Kind of want a Mall Splicer, too. Scatter the Seeds is better than Goblin Instigator. I guess at that point we can play this instead of a Kranko's Command. And then I need to make one cut. We'll get rid of a Fervent Cathar. Sure. All right, we got it in time. Let's go first. <laughs> This is this is the kind of hand we expected. I think I do keep it because we have good removal. Pierce Peace Strider can kind of like break the life gain stalls. And then Overgrown Armasaur. It's gonna be tough for them to push through. And they mulliganed perfect. I maybe should have gone second. Is that something I should have done to like make sure I can hit all of my mana? Hmm. Okay, Scourge Devil, not really where I wanted to be right now. I wanna see the Gruel Turf or something. Wild Mongrel. So I'm going to Searing Blaze that. If they want to discard two cards, that's cool with me. Gruel thing. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. All right. Okay. So 
We need to draw running forests. I think I have like seven forests in the deck now. Reason wolves. That's dying. Okay, there's our forest. Maybe it's not dying. I'll just trade off Peace Strider. This might have been way too much sideboarding. Okay. I will trade. So I take two in the process. That's not so bad. All right, we want to draw a forest here for Overgrown Armasaur. Yes, yes, okay. Play the big boy. Good luck killing him. What? You have a bigger dinosaur? That's not even cool. For real, that's not cool. Doesn't have trample. Um, I can play Scourge Devil, pump up my Overgrown Armasaur, make it a 5-5 and hit. I did not know this card existed, I'm going to be honest. Take five. Cool beans. All right. Hopefully this sideboarding paid off and I draw like my giant vital splice or whatever that card is. Okay. I take one. I get a sapperling. I don't think they can really attack here though. Yeah. I'm, I'm digging this. Play the elder. Um, I can trade. Actually attacking with scourge devil here feels pretty good because they block here. And then I do two and one. So yeah, let's do that. Because I have the unearth anyway, which is going to be good later on. Or I just get in for three damage. That also seems good. Sapherd. Okay, so I get to kill Sapherd and Hissing Iguanar. If I want. That's a land which I don't like. Kill Sapherd, Hissing Iguanar, swing out. They block here. Chump here, they take three, go to six. That's actually not so good for me. If I just attack with Scourge Devil, what about just Scourge Devil Mog Flunkies? That actually seems good. I'm cool with this. Opponent goes to no creatures in play without a pump spell. I take four, not the end of the world. And my five, six hippo is bigger than the Imperiosaur, which is good. But I want to keep Yavimaya Elder. Two, one there. Hope for no pump spell. Nice, nice! And holding Mountain in hand for Plated Geopede, things like that. Although I have Yavimaya Elder. Alright, I'll play the land. So Scourge Devil is like kind of lethal. Yeah, that doesn't block so good. Oh, actually it does block so good, never mind. Creatures you control get plus one plus one O oh, until end of turn. So I unearth this, or they block here and I sacrifice it, so they get hit for six. I don't hate that. Sacrifice you, get some lands, uh, forest, forest, sure. Draw a non-land? Okay, <laughs> I guess so. So he's gone, and we're very live to the top of our deck. Opponent cannot attack unless they find other things. All right, deck, give me the goods. That will do it. I can even play around a lightning bolt. Oh, actually... I can play around Burst Lightning, but not Lightning Bolt. Oh no, I can't. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. We did it. That was actually a bad play. I forgot you can't flash it back until it's resolved. So if I Sylvan Might there, and then they Lightning Bolt my Sapperling, then my attack looks pretty bad. But we did it. We're in the finals. See you guys there. Alright, we're in the finals. Playing against Snorez. Psh. Feel like a fun. Let's do this. Let's go first. Being on the play is also really great. Uh, again, Forgotten Cave pulling overtime here. We're going to lead on Frenzied Goblin, get in that extra damage. This again, another five land hand. The lands have not been friendly to us, but our deck is good. And this is a five land hand with, oh man. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to attack because if they have a kill spell, they're going to want to kill this. Then I get to jam play to GP with Evolving Wilds. Okay. Let's just hope they don't have a way to kill it. That is not a way to kill it. Oh man. Oh, that's dirty. Okay. Um, let's Rancor up the Plated Geopede. Get down our fetch land. Oh man. Yeah. This is going to be like a million damage. So we want a second forest here. Just in case we want to double Rancor on a turn. It's a good turn three, what do you think? A1 to stop you from blocking. Next turn I can Fervent Cathar plus Frenzied Goblin. 
Or I can just run out of Mog Flunkies and then set up for Fervent Cathar later. That actually seems kind of good. So let's play Mountain, trigger Landfall, because if they don't have a way to kill this, they're in very much trouble. 5-3. Yeah, I'm just going to attack. We are assuming that they have a kill spell, but even if they do, they take one, they go to nine, and then I get Rancor back, because that's just how good of a card it is. Then I get to go Mog Flunkies, Rancor, and then Fervent Cathar, plus Frenzied Goblin, sorry Bomber. And this deals combat damage to a player, make two 1-1 one -one Gobbos. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to do this. Stop the Thari Bomber from blocking. Or let's see, I can stop both of the one ones from blocking. And then they have the block of Kathari Bomber on Frenzied Goblin take seven fall to two. That feels a little bit better. That feels a little bit better. Because then I still have Fervent Cathar around. Alternatively, I stop this and this from blocking, and then they have Viscera C on Fervent Cathar. And then if they killed Frenzy Goblin, maybe that's better. Actually, let's do that. Stop you from blocking. Because if they want to kill Fervent Cathar, then I still get the Frenzy Goblin. So yeah, this is just better than the Cathari Bomber play. So I can go Mountain, then I can cycle Forgotten Cave. They're at 2 life, and they need to kill this, plus they're at 2 life. So get back the Sarah Seer. Uh, does that do it? Yes. So they, this has five, so they have to double block here, single block here, they go to one creature in play, and like one life. Whoa! What? You're dead on board. Oh, no, 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 because they get tokens, okay. Does that work? If that works, that's kind of awesome. If it doesn't, they're dead on board. That is so cool. Well played, opponent. Oh. So I have to attack with both, but if they kill Mog Flunkies, I get the Rancor back. This is not good for them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I don't know. There's not much you can do against that. So they had a Cathari Bomber, but that's pretty like rare as far as things go. So I think like this worked game one, so I'm just gonna keep it for game two. I don't wanna mess up my mana like I did for the other games. All right, let's keep this hand. It's pretty medium, but again, ratio of lands to spells is good. And Magma Jack can help us win stuff. We're also two cards ahead thanks to them mulliganing plus us being on the play. Hmm. Oh, played a Geopede. They can trade a creature for my Geopede, which I don't like. Artillerize. So we can go Mountain Hellraiser. Seems okay. Then I go land, echo, Kranko's command. Okay. They have a lot of things to sacrifice. Maybe the echo. So I think I actually want to just magma jet the blood flow connoisseur while I can. I'm going to attack and let them potentially double block. I mean, that would be a mistake, but we'll give them the option too. Because then I can magma jet one of them. Okay, so they don't block. Let's kill this now. I don't get the scry, which is good play on their behalf. And I pass. So play the Geopede. It'll at least trade for like a 1-1 one, one from their side, which is okay. Oh, that's good. Um, well, we hit for three. See what happens here. Okay. Uh, I think at this point I just go bladed Geopede, hold priority evolving wilds. That seems fine to me. So now it pumps. If they want to kill it, they have to do it now, and then I can just crack Evolving Wilds, which is the play anyway. My plate's ending there. Okay. To your face, you fall to 12. 12 is very low against an opponent with Artillerize. I tell you what. Okay. I just don't crack Evolving Wilds. I attack 4-1. I play Krenko's Command. And here's where things get awkward. But GP can actually still just attack pretty well. And there's a forest, so... Got him? 3-3. Three, three. So now, I could potentially just equip the Volshock Morningstar to the plated GP and have a giant first striker. That way they can basically never kill it. Uh, I guess I don't like equipping that because 
they could just kill the goblin I equipped to. So let's attack. So they block their sacrifice to do one to a token. I could put them to six, but I think Artillerize will be fine as a finisher. Now I play Mog Flunkies, I think. I could also just play the Morning Star. That seems pretty good, actually. So now it's a permanent 3 3 first strike with the ability to pump it at instant speed kind of whenever I want. And yeah, I can always just sacrifice the Volshock Morning Star to Artillerize. Okay, so they. They go down there. Do they have an edict? There's a crater hag. They pump up their guy. Sure. Hmm. So I can fetch and stop them both from blocking. Hit them for three, put them down to seven, play a four four. That actually seems kind of okay. Uh, no, no, no. I don't even need to do that. Because I can just draw a land. Play this. This becomes a five five. They have to chump, or they die. All right, good game. Cool, we did it! That's another trophy! We are kind of crushing this format, which I kind of expected, because it's everything I like about all good formats. That's back-to-back -back trophies. All right, let's look at the deck. I don't know why it gave me the white symbol for my deck. View previous deck. So what did I like about this deck? Plated GOP is really good. Um, Rancor is like just worth splashing. It's very, very solid. Volshock Morningstar, I would put this as probably one of the best cards in the cube, given what I've seen so far, because aggro seems good. Plus two, plus two just makes all of your things trade up. Like that's great. Um, Arc Lightning was insane every time I cast it. And Artillerize keeps going up and up in my evaluation because there's going to be something to sacrifice and just that little extra bit of re reach. Like nobody plays around five damage to the face, but this gets there. Um, yeah, see you guys soon.